There was this idea of community-owned internet. So there's a, there's a city, and the city says, we can give everyone in the city uh, one gigabit per second internet for 10 euros a month. The, the city calculates the cost. They say, we're going to put fiber to every house. And then there's ISPs, and they say, well, you can't do that because you're competing with us, and we're a private company. And the private company actually will sue the city and say, if you do this, you have to pay us for our lost revenue. And there's actually international treaties that say if the city competes with a private company and the, and the private company loses money, then the government has to pay the private company for the lost revenue. So the, the ISP would be a, a public service, but then there's a private company and, the, and they say, oh, the government can't, provide, uh, can't compete with the private company. But the internet is basically a commons. So there was this idea of municipal uh, broadband where the community could have their own, uh, where the state or the government or the municipality could create the internet for the community and the price would be one fifth the cost of the existing internet service provider and the price would be much lower and the performance would be much higher. But then because of this politics, um, it couldn't be done. And then uh, people came in and they said, well, there's two ISPs, so I want to start my own ISP. And if you try to do that, if you actually try to start an ISP and you try to get permission to like dig up a road or to dig up a sidewalk and put in cables, the existing ISP goes and hires a bunch of lawyers and starts suing you, starts bribing the politicians, starts um, trying to delay your permits, and they will drag you through the mud for 20 years of legal costs before, before you can even dig a hole to put a cable in. Because they don't want competition. So what we've seen in every single country is a consolidation of the ISP market into one or two companies that then jack up the price 15% every single year without increasing the quality. Uh, without, and so they don't increase the speed, they just jack up the price every year. So in Europe you still have three, ISP, you have three local ISPs in Hamburg. In the United States you have two, but um, you have only one uh, per city. You'll have Comcast in this city, Time Warner in this city. If you're in a particular city, there's no competition. But the government says, oh, it's, uh, there's competition because there's still two left. And then you've got places like Nigeria where 30, you know, 75 percent of their monthly income goes to their internet access because they're desperate for information and connection. But there's just one massive monopoly and they'll, they'll wring every penny out of the people that they can. Uh, so it's disturbing. So this, so what Skywire does is it's a community owned internet. So Instead of going and trying to, we tried the municipal broadband, it didn't work. We tried introducing uh, competition to the ISP market, it didn't work for political reasons. So at Skywire, what we did is we gave, allow people to buy the networking equipment. So you, you go and you put four antennas on your roof, and you, you buy a SkyMiner, you plug it in, and your neighbor does that, and it forms a, a mesh network that's peer to peer, wireless. So you don't need to install cables. And if you are using the network, you pay, co you pay coins, if you, and if you forward packets for other people on the network, you get paid coins. So this is sort of a closed loop, like local community internet. And uh, it's very interesting because in Athens, they have all these little islands, and the people put antennas on the roof, and they've built this little mesh network over 15,000 people that are living on these islands because the ISPs didn't want to lay cables onto the islands. They didn't want to deal with it. It was too expensive. It cost too much money. There weren't enough people there for them to do it profitably. <coughs> And uh, in, and so they, the community basically built their own internet. And you see the same thing with rural broadband. As you see a bunch of farmers just laying fiber optic cables so they can watch YouTube videos because the ISP says, oh, we're not going to make enough money on this. Oh, we're going to, we don't want to do this. So this is an intermediary between the municipal broadband and the, uh, the, the private sector internet. And, um, and the mesh networking technology was not viable until about three years ago. When, and now that the wireless speeds and the Wi-Fi uh, chipsets, the cost is very low and the performance is very high, we, in the next five or ten years, we're going to see a mass proliferation of um, these mesh networking applications and peer-to-peer -peer networking applications. And uh, this is going to be the primary way that most of the IoT devices and automobiles and uh, like electrical utility, uh, like smart meters, and uh, uh, connect to the internet. So if you have a if you have a, I don't know. What is, what, what, what is it when you, when you say here source routing instead of BGP? Ah, uh, uh, so in the current internet, you don't have any control over the path that the packets take. And this, in the new, this new internet, or this particular networking protocol that uh, Skywire, you control the route that your data takes through the network. So it makes everything more efficient, faster, you can send more data. 
Yeah, so in the current internet, it, there's all these ISPs, and if you if you put a, give a packet to an ISP, they try to dump the packet onto another ISP as quickly as they can, which is called hot potato routing. It's the hot potato. You have the hot potato, and you try to hand off the hot potato to the next person as quickly as they can. So if you have if you're sending a packet from New York to California on a Time Warner's network from one Time Warner user to another Time Warner user, and Comcast and they have a fiber optic cable directly between the two users. Com they will not use that fiber optic cable. They will take the packet and they will dump it on another ISP as quickly as they can to get the traffic off their network mm -hmm. because they don't want to upgrade the network equipment and they want to avoid congestion. And the way you avoid congestion is dumping the packet on someone else as soon as you can. So and then that ISP tries to dump it on some other ISP who dumps it on some other ISP that dumps it on some other ISP. <laughs> so it's a whole bunch of packets just getting sent all over the world very inefficiently. So the, they just dump the packet on the nearest person because if the packet goes on their network, then it uses their capacity, and if they reach a particular capacity utilization, they have to upgrade their network equipment. So even though they're making 95% margins and they're just drowning in a waterfall of money, none of the ISPs actually want to upgrade any of their equipment at all. And so they're actually telling you that if you go over 200 gigabytes per month, that they're gonna charge you like $5 per gigabyte. And so if you watch like three, uh, three 8K Netflix videos per month, they wanna start charging you like yeah. $20 per video for the right. bandwidth cost. And, the, the, and that fee on the 200, they say, oh, if we charge them for going over 200 gigabytes uh, per month, then we won't have to upgrade our equipment. And, and because the, even though upgrading the equipment will only cost them like 3% of the revenue, they don't even wanna do that. They just want to. They want to increase the cost every year by fifteen percent. They want a monopoly with no competition, so that you can't switch providers, no matter how much they jack the price up. And they do not want to upgrade their network equipment to provide higher, higher level so service. So basically, the old internet is held together with duct tape. Yeah, it's. And uh, when people talk about the internet of things and all of this data, we're all the bandwidth we're going to need for the internet of things and terabytes of data and virtual reality goggles and and all of this the inter, the old internet can't handle it so you need a mesh network so they have the cable company and the cable company sells you videos and the cable company is losing their revenue to netflix so now they're they tried to create a thing called hulu and they tried to take over the television market and create internet video market but that didn't work and netflix now controls the internet video market and they s still control some of the television but people are cutting the cords and so the revenue is going down, and only like your grandma is watching uh, cable TV still. So their solution was, <laughs> since half the people cut the cord and stopped watching the cable TV, their solution was to double the cost of the cable television for grandma, mm -hmm. and call charge her $200 a month instead of $100 a month, so that they can keep showing profits. And because the CEO will get fired if the, they don't show profits, and they don't really care how they do it. Okay, so then, this is a, this is a, the, the whole internet right now, yeah. the way it's structured is, is a train wreck. And it is the, the train is like a crash. And so one of the things that we found, and the reason that you have these large ISPs, uh, there's actually CEOs of companies in the United States that ran ISPs, and the U.S. government went to them and said, uh, "Here's 700 million dollars for this contract, and if you don't, and give us your user data, and if you don't give us your user data, we're pulling the money out." And the CEOs uh, basically said no, and they threw him, they they made up some SEC bullshit. And they threw him in prison because and and they had this NSA guy saying, if I see you in the parking lot, I'm going to run you over my car. <laughs> and then they uh, pulled out the government contract with 700 million, and then they said that he li and the stock price dropped like a few billion dollars. And then they said they lied to the stock sh uh, the shareholders and misrepresented the whatever. And they threw him in prison and basically like Cut tortured through. him and like Cut uh, through. yeah. And uh, and then the next CEO who came into the company then took the money and shut up and he started giving all the data that the U.S. government wanted. And that the, so the U.S. Gov the government, if you cooperate with them, we'll give you money. And if you don't co and and upgrade your infrastructure and pay all your bills and whatever, they just want you know, give us the data. And if you don't, they'll like run you through the mud. And so this is a the, the governments actually want there to be only one or two ISPs because it makes it easier to spy on everyone. It's e much easier if you have two or three companies that you need to get to comply to get everyone's information than if you have a million small ISPs and you have to go door to door. So the so there's and anyways this is a it's Great. a political issue